Yep, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Avoid legal snags by telling people they're being. Oh, okay. So, hi, everybody. We're back with another episode. With me this time is Emily, another LARP enthusiast. Emily, let's go ahead and start with what type of LARP you enjoy doing. Oh, uh, I definitely like uh, the mostly immersive LARP, so long weekends out in the woods with foam or latex weapons. Um, I have a love for the post-apocalyptic world because it's hard to break immersion in post-apocalyptic. Um, but I also do play fantasy on a two to, every two months basis. Okay. Uh, we've never really talked about any sort of post-apocalyptic type of LARPs on this channel yet. So let's start with that one. What's that one called? Well, I'm going to two games. One that's based in the Greater Toronto area named Altered. It just started its second year. Um, the storyline of Altered is a little bit, you've entered into this rift through another dimension and on your first game you fall into it and you have to react um, and then you have monsters a little bit left crafty and scary monsters that are running after you and you're trying to piece in uh, what world you're in so far I've been playing for a year and we still don't fully know what's going on so there's a big mystery and horror aspect to that game okay and I think the the I other one is called... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. The second post-apocalyptic lark I'm going to is called Remnant of Humanity. That one's based in the Ottawa Cornwall area. And it is a hundred years in the future. The apocalypse happened. And now there's a bunch of mutations that are starting to come out of the nuclear winter. And you're trying to survive in this mutated wasteland as the last survivors of humanity. <laughs> wow. So so mutants and monsters. That that's a new concept. It's not like futuristic though, right? It is what you would expect a post apocalypse to feel like, right? There are some more fantasy futuristic aspects, but those are like really special skills that the big bad monster may have, like regeneration because of a mutation or some fancy guns that we don't know in our reality yet. But it's okay. a lot more on the survival than it is on the fantasy world. Okay, so how well do you know the weapons for these types of, these post-apocalyptic games? A lot of our post-apocalyptic games uh, are mostly through uh, Nerf guns or, you know, Lark Safe Daggers and uh, Kelly Massil Epic Armory type of uh, close combat weaponry. But I'll say most people have really cool helm painted nerf guns. Okay. Do they actually shoot the darts or is it still like the little packets of bird seed like what some LARPs use? So if you're having a um, type of special spell in the remnant game, if you have like a spell attack, because there is some type of more occult magic, um, you'll have little but most people, when we're talking about weapons and guns, it is the Nerf darts, the blue ones, or the new from the Rival series, which are these yellow balls, um, and a few okay. bow and arrows. Hmm. Do I've seen uh, crossbows. You've seen crossbows I've as well? I've seen two crossbows in game. Actually, my, my partner is currently one of the masters of the crossbows. Okay. Give me one sec, because now I want to ask a very interesting question from a past video that we showed a project on. Oh, okay. Some of the viewers might recognize this. This is one of the old crossbows that I made. Oh. Do you think this would be something that is feasible for this post-apocalyptic game you're talking about? Definitely. We'd have to check how much, um, how many pounds would it be able to pull. I think the post-apocalyptic LARPs are usually between 25 to 35 pounds of pressure, depending on which ones you're attending. So uh, there's a method to pull the string and check the, the amount of uh, pounds of pressure it releases. And okay. if it's over 25, you have to be at very long distance because close up, you will bruise someone. But it does look like something. Yeah. 
Okay. And actually, people now, also get the piping and turn their normal, really impressive. Uh, yeah. Okay. So if they don't have a, a functional type of crossbow, like it's just for an aesthetic purposes, is there a different way to use it? So in the altered game, uh, you come in with three objects of your choice. It could be um, tech, uh, some resources or weapons, and everything else. It's the decoration piece that's not very functional anymore. So um, some people have an old TV set that doesn't work that they bring as a prop. So if you have a crossbow that doesn't work anymore, you can say that it's your and why you carrying it like it's my grandfather's crossbow and I keep it as a memento or something, some RP element to it. But then you can't use it in combat. My character oh. at uh, the game is known. I am the pharmacist of our group and I am often playing the high stoned everything's chill man type of individual and I carry a bag of Cheetos all the time on me <laughs> it's just one of those funny if you give me permission in game I will put Cheetos in your, your plate as a showing my appreciation for whatever service you've rendered to me so that's a prop that's always by my side i think i buy five bags before a game just in case it rains that my bag gets ruined <laughs> that is awesome i love it okay. uh, i am definitely the comic relief of the game <laughs> <laughs> okay so you had also mentioned I want... yes yeah. oh. please go ahead Oh, I once used the Cheetos to try to heal someone. Uh, I didn't have any medical tools on me, and I didn't have any medical These Cheetos, maybe you'll get some energy. I used it as elements of RP for pretty much any type of skill you can think about. <laughs> okay. So you had also mentioned a medieval, I think was a medieval fantasy type of game as well. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the franchise named Underworld, um, every major city has a guild house, and all of those guild house are related in the Underworld LARP system. So I would attend Ashendale, which recently closed and changed to Mournfall, which was the Ottawa, um, the Ottawa chapter. Um, I'm unfamiliar um, as to where you're located. Are you in the Canadian region? I am not. I'm actually in the U.S. I'm in the state of Indiana. Oh. All right. So Underworld is currently in Canada and Japan, and we're trying to merge into the U.S., so you should be seeing it fairly soon. Okay. Um, but it's a high fantasy horror. You are elves and witchlocks and all of the classic things you can imagine in your typical uh medieval fantasy novel oh, okay all right now of, of all the games you've talked about you said you said uh buffer weapons as well as latex weapons do they use one over the other currently um i see a lot more latex weapons because auto is really close to quebec and quebec is where most of the latex weapons are manufactured um, Epic Armory, Kelly Massil, Artisan Desert, they're all located maybe two hours away from me. So it's easy for our player population to be using that. But I have seen some people get really creative and make their own buffers and decorate them with so much preciseness that it becomes a completely unique weapon. In so the tendency is the older the player, the more latex or handmade latex weapons, and the newer players come in with the buffers made out of PVC and pool noodles. Okay, so something, say, like this would be more... That's a lot more what we see on a day-to-day -day basis, yeah. Okay, okay. I, um, I, I played in... 
I've played in both heavy role play type games where the latex weapons are the more common thing to see, as well as I've played in the more combat sport buffer weapon type of thing where it's less role play, more fighting all the time. So it's always interesting to see different different things. Yeah. I'll say that Underworld is very much axed on on the combat because it is the method in which you will be getting currents. You will be interact with the world is a lot through role play. So you're a citizen of this town, and this town is constantly under attack because of some danger threat depending on which season at the table having your lunch and everyone has a weapon on their hip and they're just waiting for an occasion to pull it out. Um, there are often some characters who will have special effects to smell as a um, racial advantage or disadvantage and whenever they're interacting with these they will go out looking for trouble. Um, my character's middle name is Trouble and I have a tendency of going to take long walks in the woods alone at night to hopefully encounter these types of combat because they to evolve your Okay. Well, we're, we're coming up on the end of our time here, so I do want to ask you one last thing. The three games you had mentioned, what were they and where did you say they were located at? So I'm currently going to um, the Underworld chapter, which is pretty much everywhere in Canada, but my specific chapter is the Mournfall one, which is in the Ottawa, Montreal region. Um, but that one has chapters all across Canada and Japan, and what happens in one city will affect what happens in the other. They're all interconnected and participate in one big storyline. The Altered Game is on its second season, and that one's the greater and a remnant of humanity is on its first year, and that one's in the Ottawa Cornwall area. Okay. Well, cool. So to all our viewers, we're going to put links down below in the description in case you want to look into those LARPs. Don't forget to check out the Twitter page as well as hit the subscribe and the bell to keep up with everybody. Emily, thank you for having uh, taking the time to be on the episode. Really <laughs> well, thank you for having me. It was really nice. Yeah. All right. So until next time, stay safe and have fun.